Hi everyone, Trina Phoenix here, and I was going to get more into symbology, and there's a little bit more and kind of summarize the symbology um, due to, um, it's kind of some esoteric teachings that they're showing you how to work on integrating your higher self and through that raising vibration, which is enlightenment or ascension, and then the other part of it is, is um, they're giving you keys on how to manifest and um, actively start to change your own inner world, which will change your outer world. So um, this is some pretty good information, and um, it works. So I've, I've, I've put these practices to trial, and uh, they really do work. So with that, we're going to get into symbology. And um, where we were at were keys and codes. And then um, they were giving like a, a, a basically like a, a wrap up of the things that they kind of have covered a little bit with the symbology. And the first one was the laws that were governing the vortex at Bimini. They are complex, but they can be reduced to three. They are the following. Understand that north, south, east, and west truly all one direction when it comes to the electromagnetic currents that rule the earth. Two, keep a perspective that balances the moon's energy with that of Polaris. And you will reveal to yourself the secrets of the ages. Three, know that all power rests within your own consciousness when the ego has been eliminated. So those are the three steps that we're given to prepare and start preparing for Bimini. All of the universal laws are revealed in these three statements. The breath contains the depth of knowledge and provides the means by which the third eye will open to reveal the understanding to each of you. The instructions that were given for third dimensional movement. Agenda. Number one. Each day, be attuned in dual consciousness and receive individual codes for the day's itinerary. And that means pay attention to symbols and information, dreams, uh, urges, inspiration, and try to pay attention to those nudges I call from the universe to help let you know if you're on your correct path. And um, when you kind of are in alignment with what you're supposed to be doing, uh, things seem to just kind of balance out and kind of start coming a little bit easier to you. Um, all things great, I take great effort, but um, the path to get there just opens up for you and the means and how to do it are shown to you in ways that you could have never imagined on your own. And that's, that's the wisdom of trust and faith and just knowing your internal guidance will get you there. Just know it will get you there. So. Number one was each day be attuned in dual consciousness, which is thought and logic. It's uh, emotion and logic. It's the dual part of the mind. It's the, the man and female. It's masculine, feminine, yin, yang, duality. So blending those together activates balanced. And through that balance, you're, you're walking in the, the resonance of the masters. So... Each day be attuned with dual consciousness and, and receive the codes for the day's itinerary. Two, take note of the clues given throughout the day and summarize the information to understand the solution. Number three, conduct a meeting at the end of the day to discuss the information received. Compare and share messages and insights and notice the similarities <clears throat> among information. Excuse me. So this is how they were processing all the information that they were getting from Kathumi 
and they were putting it all together in different ways and using creativity, poetry, art, meditation, uh, different things to bring forth different interpretations of the information that they had received. And through the collaboration and the sharing of their information, they got a much vaster, fuller picture of what might be the true decoding of these messages that they were receiving. So and this is how it kind of works. When you're gaining uh, new spiritual information, it comes in images, songs on the radio, numbers, colors, scents, memories, um, all these different ways. So um, when you start to kind of tune in to your own internal processes and, and pay, pay attention to what you're drawn to, what you're looking at, what you're hearing, what you're seeing, kind of really focusing in on what's going on in your internal mind, not just going through the motions like we do so often, literally tuning into what am I thinking about and why? What brought me to that thought? And then think of, remember the image that brought you to the thought and start having some accountability in your own mind for your thought processes so you can actually start to slow it down and be more of a conscious driver. And when you can do that, synchronicity will start showing up in your life very, very quickly. So um, all individuals will receive their own coding to decode, but each must be attuned in his or her dual conscious role because each will be the receiver of his or her unique day's plan. That's the beauty of our diversity. The uniqueness of us is our greatest strength because what one can see another can't and what one can another can't but it's through that diversity where we are literally the fullness so the brilliance in our togetherness is profound because <laughs> always somebody's going to have the answer within the group so it's, it's a beautiful thing throughout each day journey each individual will be provided the clues to decode the signals that will be sent at the conclusion of each day, the information that is needed to understand the solutions will be there. This will then have to be synthesized by each participant on the path. And then we get into um, Delfor's, Delfor's protocol and his message. So in the messages of Delfor, she calls him the diplomat of the divine. He gave instructions that were described as protocol to be observed in the preparation for the journey as well as during the journey. Webster's Dictionary defines protocol as a code of precedence in rank and status and correct procedure in a diplomatic exchange. One of the things that were told was that the instructions would prepare us for an interdimensional meeting between dignitaries. It appeared that this meant a meeting would take place between the Ascended Masters and us. This caused some excitement and we wanted to be sure to follow the protocol. In following these instructions, the group members used the process to describe, um, he described for meditation and took note of all the attitudes and behaviors that would be important in certain situations as well as throughout the trip. The following are examples of Master Delfor's protocol. 1. Come prepared with the bathe with the bath of the golden light. This cleansing must be accomplished beginning three days before your journey, your journey into the vortex. You should meditate on the frequency and allow it to penetrate your essence. Know that it is liquid and that this fluid will coat and protect you as you begin the first moments of your journey. Next, hold a clear conscious with your heart for every single action, thought, or emotion that is within your electronic circles, allow everything of a disrupting vibrational nature to soar to the heavens to be recycled. 
work on this release for it will be the releasing that will allow you to become light. Next, know that every thought you generate will be magnified through each of these power points a million fold. Therefore, watch the protocol of your own behavior and assure your higher selves your ego will not rule for one minute on this journey. Mm. Such beautiful information. So to summarize, we use symbols constantly in our daily lives. Symbols play an important role in the bridging of the thought world and the material world. The mind has a thought when and then it creates an image or a symbol that becomes the vehicle through which the thought manifests physically. In just the same way that the mind can translate a thought into a physical manifestation, so can the mind translate from the physical back to the thought that gave birth to it, and also connect with the more expanded and profound concept from which it originated. All symbols hold a vibration which carry the essence of the original thought and connect the symbol to the thought. Focusing on the symbol can therefore lead one to the original concept and also to the expanded awareness that surrounds the concept. Words are symbols. Each word carries an energetic vibration. Different combinations of words carry different vibrations, which can be very powerful in their effects. Examples of these are mantras and affirmations, which not only create an uplifting effect on the individual using them, but also when expressed with strong emotion and imbued with the power of the will they can set up a resonant field which attracts the energy necessary for manifestation to occur. The point of focusing or meditating on the symbolism in these three messages is to reach a state of expanded awareness which allows access to the truth and knowledge that is the higher essence of the symbol. One can then bring it to the conscious mind for use in deliberate creation. The ability to assimilate this higher knowledge for use is dependent upon the vibrational frequency one has attained within her, his or her own being. For understanding only comes when one is at a level of consciousness that can attain it. It is also true that study and meditation on symbols can expand the consciousness and help raise the vib vibratory rate of the student so that further expansion is possible and higher understanding will be gained. Chapter 17 The Bimini Experience if one, <clears throat> if one is fortunate, there are moments in life that stand out like shining jewels, shimmering and glowing long after the moment has passed. Such a moment in time was the trip to Bimini, made by 34 men and women in February 1991. History may prove it to be a historic turning point for the planet Earth, much occurred during the days of February 7th through February 12th that not only affected the earth, but also imprinted the etheric. We will never forget those days in February, for we were told that we would have the honor of being members of a group that performed a service for the planet. And in return, each of us received gifts and blessings 
which have moved us all much further on the paths of our own evolution. A group of near strangers came together to relieve, to relive the tragedy of the destruction of Atlantis. Our journey brought the release of emotional blocks and fears caused by that trauma. We were told by the Ascended Masters that our presence in the Atlantean Vortex assisted in cleansing the Earth of an energy imbalance created by the destruction and gave us the opportunity to begin reclaiming the knowledge and the powers that we were told we once held in that great civilization. So that this understanding can be used to help heal the earth and bring forth the seventh golden age heralded for this planet. Bimini. As the reader has already learned, the focus of our journey was the Bimini Island. These islands lie approximately 50 miles east of Miami. There are two islands, North and South Bimini, which shelter a number of small caves, caves and islets. The North and South Islands form a short, a short of, a sort of horseshoe-shaped configuration with a very small stretch of the Atlantic between them. The Biminis are a part of the Grand Bahamas. A quotation from Edgar Cayce on Atlantis tells us something about Bimini in relationship to Atlantis. The position the continent of Atlantis occupied is between the Gulf of Mexico on the one hand and the Mediterranean upon the other. Evidences of this lost civilization are to be found in the Pyrenees and Morocco, British, Honduras, Yucatan, and America. There are some protruding portions that must have at one time or another been a portion of this great continent. The British West Indies or the Bahamas are portions of the same that may be seen in the present. If a geological survey would be made in some of these, especially or notably in Bimini and in the Gulf Stream through this vicinity, these may be even yet determined. The reading places the former continent or the lands of Atlantis in the midst of the Atlantic Ocean, as did Plato. It names the lands to which the inhabitants fled and the places where one might look today for such evidence of this long vanished civilization. Wow. Bimini Magic. Bimini had a magic about it hard to describe. Perhaps it was because of the opening of the vortex or the significance of the event that brought all of the 34 together in a bond that permeated the entire island. The energy of the vortex caused many diverse people and personalities to come together and interact with a sense of purpose in being members of this group. The energy also had the power to push all of our buttons over and over again causing many spontaneous releasings and clearings. Instant relationships were formed that were never to be forgotten, no matter how much time or distance comes between. The sense of unity and purpose felt among the 34 people was rare and a beautiful experience. Time Warp the day before we were to leave on our journey, one of the group members, a medical doctor, reported that in the morning, as he was writing a prescription, 
He checked his watch for the date. He noticed a very strange thing. His watch had begun to run on accelerated time. The date was advanced and continued to advance throughout the trip until we left the vortex. It appeared that the electromagnetic energies were creating kind of a time warp and giving us notice to what was to take place in the vortex. Kuthumi had told us that controlling time was one of the powers held by the Atlanteans. Wow! Controlling time was one of the powers held by the Atlanteans. And that when we were in the vortex, we would be in a place where time had stopped. The doctor's watch was a reminder that we were about to embark upon a journey which would be filled with intrigue and adventure on a grander scale than any of us had known before. The Beginning the trip to Bimini will be exciting and eventful. We will guarantee that reality from Master Kathumi's message. Our adventure began on Thursday, February 7th, 1991. In his messages, Kathumi had told us that we would receive information for five days beginning on Thursday that would help us to decode the keys. We gathered in airports. We all had a great sense of anticipation and excitement and wondered what the events would occur and how would it begin this process. As we were about to see, the adventure was truly going to be eventful. Some were to witness that the masters were not were also not without a sense of humor. They do have a sense of humor. Approximately half of the group arrived in Miami on Thursday evening and stayed at a hotel near the airport. The next morning, they drove to Port Wayne in the tiny trailer that served as the terminal customs office to await the seaplane that would take them to Bimini. There was nothing around this little finger or land. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a helicopter landed about 40 yards from the trailer. As the travelers peered out the window, a man emerged from the helicopter wearing a Superman-like costume, complete with a red cape, tights, boots, and all, and a large R in the middle of his chest. Unable to contain their curiosity, a few ran over to investigate this caped crusader, who seemed to have appeared for their benefit. When they approached, he loudly proclaimed, I am Mr. Recycle. Remember to recycle. He then gave them the thumbs up and proceeded to walk around picking up trash and cans. This incident reminded the group of a message from Master Delfor. To hold a clear consciousness with your heart for every single action, thought, or emotion that is within your electronic circles. Allow everything of a disrupting vibrational nature to soar to the heavens to be recycled. From Master Delfor's message. The group remembered, and they had a great laugh at this cosmic joke, reminding them of the message that they were, sh they were sure that the masters had set this one up just for their amusement. This event signaled a suspicious and, no, an auspicious beginning for this grand adventure, for Mr. Recycle reminded the group of one of the most important keys to the entire experience, to let anything disruptive return to its source, to be recycled and two, work on this release, for it will be in the releasing that will allow you to be light. With the memory of this light-hearted reminder fresh in their minds, the first group of the Atlantean travelers contemplated this humorous example of the Master's symbolism as they boarded the plane to Bimini. The first group arrived on the island around noon, and the rest of the travelers arrived in the late afternoon, and proceeded by van and then ferry to the main street of Alice Town. On North Island, Alice Town, Alice in Wonderland. Literally, I just saw Alice in Wonderland. 
to find their motel and connect with the first arrivals. The group was divided between two motels on the main street of Alice Town. The Complete Angler, which faced onto the street, and the Blue Water Inn, which was set up on a hill slightly behind the other motel. By 7 p.m., most of the group were eating dinner together in the dining room of the Blue Water Inn, meeting each other and getting acquainted. That initial meeting was joyous. It was as if long-lost friends had finally been reunited after a very long time. We knew that we had been together before and that we were together once again to renew our bonds and to do the work that we had promised to do. A sense of excitement surrounded all of us as we realized that we had finally come together to fulfill a common destiny. The Wind The weather was beautiful when the first group arrived on Bimini at midday on Friday. A mild breeze was blowing and it was sunny and bright. Not remarkable weather for that time of year. However, by the time the second group arrived, in the late afternoon, the breeze had become very strong. And by the evening, it had grown to a glale force, buffeting the palm trees crazily in all directions. According to the islanders, gale force winds were unusual for that time of year. They commented on how strange the weather had turned. Our group instinctively knew that the high winds were due to the opening of the vortex foretold in Kuthumi, Kuthumi's message. Filled with the wonder, we tried to anticipate what would happen next. We were to see that this was just the beginning of a series of magical events that would bring home the truth of the Master's messages. Opening Ceremony Bimini is situated on Earth in a location where it receives the greatest amount of energy from Polaris, especially at this time during the year. Therefore, know that you will receive a shower of brilliance during your stay on the island, a ceremony of the awakening of this energy to its full intensity is scheduled to commence at midnight on February 8th. This ceremony will include all conscious sentient beings who wish to participate in its offerings. We met Friday night at about 10.30 p.m. I will resume there because I'm worried the video might stop. So <laughs> I love y'all. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you're finding this fascinating. This is kind of how life starts to work when you start to get on these paths. And you know, I know things are really weird in the world and things are um, in a transitional state, but I really think that um, many of us should really see if we could try to work together to go meet maybe in, Arca in Arkansas near Marsha to dig for crystals and just spend some time together as a group and get to know each other because I know meeting all of you would be like meeting lost family members and friends that I've loved and cherished for many, many lifetimes. So I think that's something we should try to manifest collectively, a time and a space where we can come together and get to know one another on a personal level, face to face. I think that would be an amazing thing to aspire to do. So we'll work on that and uh, hopefully we will manifest it very soon and much sooner than later. So I love you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of my soul tribe. I love you all and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.